In this example, we're given a circuit that has already been transformed to the phasor domain, and we're being asked to compute um, this phasor current, which is I0. Okay, and the circuit contains a couple of sources. There's a current source and a voltage source, and since both of them have been transformed to the phasor domain, that means they're operating at the same exact frequency. So they're sinusoid with the same exact frequency, just a different phase. And specifically, you can see that this is zero, this is 90 degrees, so they're 90 degrees off, with V being um, ahead of A, basically leading A. Anyhow, um, we want to find I0. There's multiple um, circuit analysis technique that we can use, but probably you have figured out since I've given you these um, mesh currents in here, we should be using mesh equations. And frankly speaking, um, using mesh here, we know that I3 will be exactly the same as this current source, so that leaves us with I1 and I2, so two unknowns, um, two equations to solve this particular circuit. So let me get started by writing um, the different mesh current um, equation. So the first one will be um, the third mesh and I'm starting with it because I know that I3 is um, 5 0 degrees amp and from there over I basically will just um, substitute it by its value. I can keep it in I3 and then substitute it but it just I'll save some time. And now I'll solve, um, I'll write the equation for I1. So I1 in here basically is 8 I1 plus um, J10 times I1 minus I3. Well, I3 is just 5, that's what I'm saying. Um, we'll just substitute it by its value, um, plus or negative 2J or J2, and that's here I1 minus I2, and that equals 0. And then um, we'll do some algebra um, so that we isolate I1 and I2 with coefficients. So let me just do that and come back to you. And that would be the following, which is 8 plus 8 of j, and that's here is i1 plus 2j i2, and this one is equals 50j. So that's the first equation here for the two unknowns that we have. So now we go ahead and we'll write the mesh equation at the second mesh, and what we'll end up with is negative j2, and that will be i2 minus i1, um, negative um, also j2 this is basically one for here and one for here okay and this one is i2 minus i3 which i know is five um, amps and um, then what we have is we have plus four of i2 um, plus of course this is already a voltage that i know which is 20 times 90 degrees and uh, here is equal to zero so now we have the second equation, um, we need to clean it um, so that it's coefficient of I1 and I2. And that will be 2J I1 plus 4 minus 4 of J I2, and that equals negative 30J. So this is now the second equation. So two equations to unknowns. I'll write them in matrix form so that I can actually solve them using a calculator or Python maybe or MATLAB. Um, 8 plus 8 of J and this one here is 2 of j, and this one will be 2 of j, and this is 4 minus 4 of j, and this one here will be this time i1 and i2, and that should be on the other side will be 50j, and then negative 30j, so I'll go ahead and solve this. Okay, so I went ahead and I updated um, the matrices, this is A, this is B, and I got the solution, and the solution in um, rectangular format is this way, and I just wanted to show you like we can get the magnitudes um, of these complex numbers and the phase this way. So for example, what we have is I've stored the answer in a matrix called answer and it has, um, this is basically my um, I1 and this is my I2 for this particular example. They're both in rectangular form. If I wanna convert them, I can either use my calculator or maybe since I'm already in Python, I can just convert it. And it's as easy as um, we'll call a function called apps for absolute for the answers and it gives me the magnitude of I1 and the magnitude of I2. And also we can call what we call the angle. And I can show you here, for example, we can just say an, um, NumPy angle of the answer and it will give me the phases. However, these are in radians. Um, typically we need to convert this to degrees. So this is what you see in here. I basically passed it to another NumPy function called degrees to convert these from radians to degrees. And of course you can, you can do that also manually by saying, well, um, how do I get from radians to degrees? You multiply by 180 divided by MP times pi, for example, and we should end up with the same one. So I basically multiplied 180 degrees divided by pi, and that converts um, from um, radians to degrees, or we can just call the degrees. It's either way is fine. All right, so I'll move these um, um, to my notes, and let's continue. 
So I copied these solutions from Python to here. This is what I1 is. This is what I2 is in the phaser domain. Um, let's go back to the question. The question is not asking me to find I1 and I2. The question is asking me to find I0, which is here. And taking a look at this particular example for this particular circuit, I0 and I2 are opposite of each other. So I can just simply write that, well, I'm looking for I0, which is negative I2. Remember, we're dealing with complex numbers, so you can't just tell me it's negative 6.12 something. This isn't how it works. The way it works is the following. So I'm going to draw I2 here. So I2 will be something like this in here. I2 is actually from the cosine. I'm assuming it's actually everything is from the cosine. So from here to here is negative 35.22 degrees. And the magnitude for this I2 in here is just 6.12. So when I'm telling you that I need the negative of that, you shouldn't just tell me I need the negative 6.12. That's not how it works. What it works is basically I'm asking you to find me this one here. This is I0. And this one from here to here is negative 35.22. And as it turns out to be that what you do is you just rotate it by 180 degrees or negative 180 degrees. Either way is fine. So if you decided to tell me, well, I'll iterate it to 180 degrees, basically in the positive direction, that means you need to figure out what this angle is. And that simply um, can be computed as I naught. Let me just do that in here which is 6.12 and then negative 35.22 degrees plus 180 degrees. That's what we'll end up with, which is 6.12. And the answer for um, that will be, I believe it's 144.78 degrees. This is here, 144.78 degrees. Um, the other the other way um, you could have showed me as well is maybe instead um, you're going to go in the opposite direction in here, which is you're going to subtract it 180 degrees. By subtracting 180 degrees, you need to tell me what this angle is from here to here. Okay, and that will become 6.12, and this one is negative 35.12 or 35.22, negative 180 degrees. Okay, and that here is 6.12, and the angle would be 2, 115, 22 degrees. Um, so I can write it in here. This is 2, 1, 5, 2, 2 um, degrees, and that's in the negative, okay? All right. Um, I have done this as negative. This is just positive in here. And that's basically the solution. Now, um, are we being asked to compute these in the time domain? No. And the reason why is because I don't know the frequency. So everything here is based on omega, but I don't know what omega is. If I'm to compute it and assuming that everything has been in cosine when we did the transform, so this was in cosine, this one is in cosine. When we did this transform with some, um, I said um, omega is two, omega is not two. Omega can be any number. Um, I don't know what that number is. So you can simply tell me, okay, so I naught is, or I naught, which is as a function of t, is just simply 6.12, um, assuming it's based on the cosine, and omega because I don't know what it is t and then I can use either one of them and by the way this here should be negative okay so this one here will be plus 144.78 degrees and that will be in amps